Um, my name is Dave Buxton. I live in Normal, Illinois. Uh, my hometown is Decatur, Illinois. I came up to study art at uh, ISU in 1977, so I was there from 77 to December 79 uh, to get my BFA. I earlier went to Richland Community College for my general studies. Um, so, yeah, so my main guys at ISU were Harold Greger and, and Ken Holder in painting, because that was what I was interested in. I have two degrees from Illinois State. I have a degree in art, so I have the BFA, and I also have a Bachelor of Science in Computer Science. So that's where I've spent the last 36 years or so, is working for a country financial in, in IT. Um, I, I've done a few paintings over the years, and uh, but now I'm retired from country, so now I'm trying to get back into it. So I'm, you know, starting to do some paintings. I'm just set up in my basement right now, painting and um, doing different things. Uh, you know, some portraiture, some still life, some, you know, probably do some landscapes. Just trying to figure out where I, what I want to, what what I want to focus on. Um, my I guess my favorite or best Harold Greger story would be, um, you know, when, when I was going to school in uh, ISU back in, you know, set the 70s. Um, anyway, Harold uh, liked to give people opportunities, you know, so he talked about going to New York and being an artist and stuff. So anyway, he had a show in New York, and I can't remember exactly which gallery it was, but um, he, so I have my, uh, myself and my best friend in college at the time also studying art, Dave Phelps. Uh, Dave Phelps had a old Sweeney carpet van, um, you know, the Sweeney Brothers flooring. Uh, they, they had an old van. Anyway, they sold it to him. So he had this old Sweeney carpets van, and Harold Greger had a show in New York, and he said, you know, if you guys want to take these paintings in New York, it would be an opportunity for you to go to New York, visit the galleries, see what it's like. So we loaded up, uh, I don't know, probably 10 or 12 Harold Greger paintings in the back of the Sweeney carpet van and uh, drove to New York. So we just drove straight through in this van that said, yeah, you know, on the side of the van it said, um, can't sing but can cut a rug, you know, so all the way to New York in this orange and yellow van. And so we went to New York, and we, we were there at night, and we decided, well, um, let's, let's you know, see a couple sites. So we went to the World Trade Center, and we go, let's, let's see if we can get to the roof of the World Trade Center and see the lights and, and all of that. So we were driving around the World Trade Center, and there was a parking spot, like, right in front, at the front door of the World Trade Center, and we were like, wow, we are the luckiest guys in the world. There's an empty spot right here in front of the World Trade Center, and we whipped the, the Sweeney carpet van in there and hopped out, and back, you know, this is, you know, pre-9-11, so, you know, back in the 70s, so we hopped out, we walked into the uh, World Trade Center. I just remember in the atrium, there was a big Helen Frankenthaler painting. It was this huge, because um, the atrium was huge. Anyway, hopped on the elevator, Back in those days, you could take it to the 80th floor. You had to get off, get on another set of elevators, and you could just take the elevators to the roof. Nothing was locked up. We, were, we, we got up there. The, the door to the roof was, was open. We walked out, and, you know, wow, right? We, we were walking out on the roof of the, one of the towers and walking around looking and arguing about, you know, this is Brooklyn over here, and this is, you know, New Jersey over here, and, you know, and seeing the sights, and, you know, it was wonderful. It was just fantastic. You could see Midtown Manhattan. You could see Central Park and, you know, the lights and stuff. So I did that for a while, and then we, you know, went back downstairs, you know, back in the atrium, and back out, and the van was gone. And we were like, oh no, 
you know, the van full of paintings is gone. And, uh, you know, so we, we were running around and we found a police officer and we said, you know, officer, officer, someone stole our van. You know, it's full of paintings. We were supposed to deliver, you know. And so he says, okay, show me, show me where you're at. And, um, you know, so we go, it was right here. And, and he goes, son, do you see that sign over there? It says, you know, that you can park here between these hours. What time is it? You know, so you're like, okay, so. Um, and the way I remember it, we, we actually got a ride in a New York City police car. I'm not, I'm not really sure why, but we did. And then eventually we caught a cab. And well, I think at the police station, they were like, okay, if you want to go get your van full of paintings, you have to go to New Jersey. So anyway, so we caught a cab, you know, it was nighttime. We went to New Jersey to where they tow all the cars from Manhattan. And it was like the, a scene from uh, Raiders of the Lost Ark, the first movie. At the end of the movie where you walk into the warehouse and you just see boxes forever. Well, anyway, here you, you walk to the, to the plowing, towing, you see cars as far as the eye can see. You can see these cars. Well, anyway, long story short, we got the van back. The paintings were still in there. Uh, we paid our, you know, at the time, you know, 60 or $70, whatever it was. And, and then we basically lived with that van and those paintings until we delivered them the next day. So we delivered them, everything was fine. And, um, you know, then, you know, saw some sights and, and went home. And then a, a few years ago, um, you know, I, I stopped by the Gregor Gallery and I, I told, you know, Harold Gregor this story. And he goes, well, that's nothing. He goes, one time I had a van full of paintings, you know, the paintings were stolen and, um, you know, they recovered them and they were, in, and I forget where exactly this was at, but he said, I saw on the news, you know, my paintings were, they were storing them in a jail cell, you know, and, and anyway, so he goes, yeah, so I've had them stolen before, so no, you know, no big deal. So anyway, all was good. So that's my Harold Gregor story. Um, that. Um, I guess, you know, if I had any regrets, I wish I would have spent, uh, you know, more time visiting with them over the years. I kind of, you know, when I went the uh, computer science route, kind of lost touch with them for a while, but I visited them both recently. Um, so a couple years ago, um, I, you know, I saw Harold Gregor at the, at the Gregor Gallery, I walked in there to kind of just look at some of his paintings and Marlene was in there and, uh, you know, I told her I was a former student of Harold Gregor, so she went upstairs and, and brought him down and we, you know, sat there and talked for an hour and, uh, you know, uh, I asked him if he remembered me and he's like, yeah, I remember you and I was like, hmm, I'm not so sure about that, but anyway, that's, that's great that if he did and um, we talked about art for a while talked about color and talk, he talked about how, how he loved Kandinsky. And um, so we, you know, I, I wanted to get something from him. So I ended up buying a um, print of the painting that he sold to uh, Barack Obama. So when Barack Obama was a senator, he bought this uh, one, uh, you know, kind of farm landscape. Uh, I forget what the name of it is off the top of my head, but um, anyway, um, you know, you put it in his Senate office, and then, uh, you know, later when Barack Obama was president, he put it on the first floor of the White House. So Harold Gregor was maybe the only living artist at the time to have a painting hanging on the first floor of the White House. You know, all the rest of the painters were from way from the past, probably. But um, so that that was great. Um, you know, to, to see him, um, and uh, yeah. And then I saw Ken Holder uh, a few years ago when he had his show at, at the Open Space in Bloomington. So I was able to purchase uh, one of his paintings. Um, it was the um, John Day Lock and Dam. So I, th I think when it was the 200th anniversary of Lewis and Clark, you know, Ken and his 
I think Ken and his wife, you know, they kind of recreated that Lewis and Clark route going up the Missouri, and he made some, some photographs and some paintings along the way. So I thought that was really cool because I consider myself a little bit of a history buff. So uh, I thought that was really, really neat to do. So I wanted to get one of those paintings. So I was able to get, the, get, the, get one on the, of the Missouri River and of, of, of the John Day Lock, Lock and Dam. So they were both great at giving people opportunities. I mean, I remember one time with Ken, um, you know, he, he was taking a group of students down to um, St. Louis because there was a, they had a Monet show at the, at the museum. And um, so, uh, so we, we, we got to do that. I actually shouldn't have brought that up because actually um, I was, you know, a young college student at the time, and I actually over, he, you know, so he made this opportunity for people. I actually overslept, and I woke up about the time that the bus was leaving, and so I just assumed that they took off. So when I saw him later, he goes, no, we were waiting on you. So, he, you know, he knew how to do, like, kind of, <laughs> you know. So anyway, um, so he, you know, he made that opportunity for students. I mean, that Monet show was great. I, I mean, I just went down later with my girlfriend, now wife, and we, we saw that show that was just fabulous. But those are the kinds of things they did for students that were, were uh, really, really great. They were both just wonderful people and great professors at ISU.